Vanessa, the co-founder and chief marketing officer of Gift Better Co. And Gift Better Co. is a high volume custom corporate gifting service uh, that specializes in gifts that give back. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about how you're using Phil to run your meetings. And is there one specific meeting that you'd like to talk about today? We um, started using Fellow. Our team is very small. There's a lot going on constantly. So we started using Fellow a few months ago uh, just to streamline things because we found that everything, all the information that was coming out of meetings was either lost or very disjointed. And it was really hard for us to keep track. Um, which is why we started using it in the first place. For myself and my co-founder, we use the executive team meeting template often. Um, so we have one kind of check-in weekly to kind of review priorities, touch base about what's going on in the business that I might not have insight into. Same with her, I let her know about things that she might not have full visibility into. Um, and we've kind of adapted it a little bit to include uh, key updates about specific employees or teams or things that are coming up. Um, but that's definitely one that we lean on quite heavily. Can we talk about the sections in the template? I know it starts with share something great. So what yep. are some examples of like good news or things that you would add in this section of the agenda? Oh my gosh, it depends on the week, to be honest. Sometimes it's a one like closed X deal or got X grant. That's always one that I like to share. Um, sometimes it's you know we created we generated x amount of pipeline or somebody an employee signed a job offer we officially have a new team member uh that typically tends to be the the gist of what goes in there yeah and why do you think i mean do you think it matters to start with this with this section specifically like starting with good news how does that impact like the rest of the meeting oh my goodness i think starting off with like forcing us to reflect from the very beginning, instead of just getting down into business, does a lot for, it just kind of creates a moment of like, especially because it's my co-founder and I, we were both so busy and with things that don't really have, like sometimes they're just not fun. <laughs> so some of the things like, if we're gonna be talking about finance in this meeting, let's start it off on a good note and we can kind of connect on a really positive moment, which I love. It does a lot for our morale. That's amazing. And then the next thing is you check in on accountability. So what does that actually mean? Um, so it, because our team is so small, we both wear a lot of hats. So typically um, I'm doing kind of an update on all things, marketing, charitable partnerships, communications, etc. For my co-founder, it's like sales and operations updates and kind of talking about what uh, we specifically are owning. And then also kind of, that's where we organize the things that like both of us tackle, we kind of sort them out in that section. So things like finance and bookkeeping stuff that neither of us really want to do, we kind of just like assign tasks in there as well. The next two are you discuss what's on the horizon and share headlines. Are these sections that you kept like uh, the template in Fellow or did you yep. adapt them? Yeah, we still have them. So uh, discuss what's on the horizon. Um, those often get carried over because it's kind of just a reminder of like a broader goal or a broader objective that we have um, going on. And we give like a brief update on it if there is one, but often that just gets carried over. So for example, um, we might be doing like onboarding a marketing agency, for example, like that will just stick around for a while and I can provide a quick update on that, but it's not something that changes very often. And then employee or sharing the headlines, employee updates is typically um, for employees within the company that I might not work with directly and vice versa. We're able to kind of give quick notes about like what's going on with each person. Hey, now's a good time to check in with this person, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the last part of the agenda, I guess, is sharing, learning, and development, right? As well as the issue list. So tell us a little bit about how the meetings usually end and why you decided to keep these things for the end. Yeah, so uh, learning and development is actually twofold for us. Um, my business partner and I are very committed to our own growth. So we're often in that section talking about things that we're doing specifically for us but uh, that trickles out to the rest of the company. So that's also a section where we discuss company-wide initiatives. So for example, sometimes on that list is like, choose new books for our book club that we have, or 
um, you know, discussing whether or not we should do this employee retreat, that kind of stuff gets talked about there. Uh, and then revisit and add to issues list is like, honestly, for the most part, it's kind of like technical things that are lingering that we either need to figure out to how to outsource to get fixed or uh, that we know that we need to spend more time on eventually. <laughs> it's kind of like a to do, but later. Um, and then we also have the last section is define action items at, on to-do list. So that's just really where we're making it clear what needs to come out of that meeting, what we're expected to have an update on for the next meeting that we have. Very like tactical level. How often do you have these meetings with your co-founder and like for businesses of, of your size or like your type, what would be like a parting uh, advice or words of wisdom in terms of like setting recurring meetings with your co-founders for other business owners? Oh my goodness. I think that they're so valuable. First of all, um, so we have this meeting once a week, but we also have um, a tech sync at the end of the week. So Mondays is our, or Tuesdays is usually our one-to-one. -one. And then we also have a one-to-one -one meeting that's like specifically for the MVP that we're creating. And those, having those, parsed out into two is really important. We found that we were trying to jam so much into one session before that it was very unrealistic. We didn't get a whole lot done and usually came out of the meetings feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Um, so Fellow really, really helped us in making it clear what we're talking about in each meeting, which saved us so much time. And like having that nice moment at the beginning kind of got the um, interaction piece out of the way so that we wouldn't get carried away talking about something else for 25 minutes which I'm very prone to do. Um, and then, yeah, for companies in general, I think that it's super important to have frequent one-to-ones with your co-founder, especially if you're working on kind of in two separate areas of the business, just to make sure that each person has insight, at least some visibility into what's going on within like the broader company. And again, because things, the nature of a startup is that things grow and change quickly and it's important for me to be able to bounce ideas off of her and vice versa so that we can pivot as we need to really quickly. That's great advice. Thanks Vanessa for sharing your insights with our community. No problem. Thanks for having me.